the first question is the practice of Buddhism is becoming expensive day by day with all the economic vulnerabilities surrounding due to COVID, war and global economic crisis. How do any individual continue to fulfill practice Buddhism? That first question and the question 19, I don't know whether the number means anything to you, but uh, is kind of related. So I'm also going to read out the question 19, which is, can enlightenment be simplified? People don't have time to stay in retreat to attain enlightenment. Can we attain enlightenment through work or do we, do we attain enlightenment in very short period? What's the shortest to enlightenment? Okay, now, <clears throat> I think this, this is always the case for so-called Buddhism. I need to tell you this first. There is no such word like Buddhism or Hinduism before. Well, broadly speaking, this term Buddhism and Hinduism is created by Sometimes I say Abrahamic people, other times I say Westerners. Because it is all got to do with this, you know, River Sindhu, right? So any, any seemingly religious that is beyond the Sindhu River, Hindu, Hinduism. So I want to just tell you that. Um, I'm sure you are quite familiar with the, uh, Narendra Modi's rhetoric and whatever. They talk about something, uh, they talk something about the Sanatana Dharma. Now, or sometimes they call it a Dharmic view. Uh, you can say broadly that, you know, we even use the word Dharma. Dharma is not really a religion. But the challenge is, is also, you cannot really say it is not a religion entirely because it does seem to have a religiosity aspect. It's not really a science, but it is very scientific. It's not really a philosophy because in Nagarjuna, one of the greatest commentators of Buddhism has refuted saying that if there is any view in Buddhism, then it is not a Buddhism or a Buddha Dharma, okay? So what I want to say is this, like in all the situation, um, Dharma or Buddhism always gets hijacked by culture of the hosting country. So when Buddha Dharma went from India to China, to Japan, to Korea, Laos, Cambodia, Bhutan, Tibet, the local culture always hijack. And it sounds a little negative, but I need to tell you this. Culture is important. Because, for instance, if I want to drink a glass of water, I need the cup, I need the glass. But what I want is the water. If you want to do, if you want to actualize, let's say, awakening state, if you want to practice dharma, in other words, you need the culture. I mean, to begin with, we need to speak language. Language is a very big part of culture, right? Without the culture, there is no I mean, you cannot really relate to the Dharma without a glass, no drinking water. But what happens, especially in a traditional society like Bhutan, we end up putting so much effort in what kind of glass you have. Most of the people are actually holding an empty glass, right? We are all worried about the glass, but we are all thirsty. 
Nobody really cares about the water. This happens a lot. Um, so your question seems to indicate that practice of Buddhism is becoming expensive day by day. I guess you are talking about things like dharma, pujas, rituals. I don't know, like all the paraphilia that we, we think is what we call practicing Buddhism. Here, I will tell you what really Buddha intended. B Buddhism fundamentally only cares for the truth. Denpa, we call it truth. Four noble truth, you know, etc., etc., two truth, tr this truth, that truth, so four noble truth, or there are three characters, we call it three truths. That is actually probably the, yeah, that is the fundamental Buddhist truth. Now, this is something you can actually easily practice. Here, I will demonstrate. When we, when we go today, when we, okay, maybe not here, but tonight maybe you have a dinner appointment with your family, with your friend, and as you finish your dinner, as you say good night or goodbye, if you can train yourself in thinking, this is it, this may be the last time. Mitakpa, right? This may be my last time. That is practicing Buddha Dharma. Is that expensive? I don't think so. You don't have to buy this. You just have to think about it. You, just have, to, you, you have to get used to that, right? And not just the death, by the way. We are not talking, you know, Buddhism, many people think that Buddhism is so pessimistic, always talking about death, etc. No. It can be something very exciting also. Who knows? Do you have Ferrari? Do you? Well, thanks to impermanence, maybe you will end up having one tomorrow. We never know. So this is also a good thing. Let's say you are really depressed. Nothing is working for you today. You are so down. But you can always encourage yourself. Tomorrow is another day. This is not expensive to think. This is, this is actually probably the cheapest to practice. The second, the second, oh, this is not enough, by the way. The second is, Okay, so what, what I just told you is basically in Sanskrit or Pali, it's called anicca, meaning everything is impermanent. When I say everything is impermanent, is it a religion? I don't think so. Is it a philosophy? Maybe. Is it a science? Maybe. But it is a fact. The fact is, everything is impermanent. Our ideas, our values, what we like. I mean, I used to like uh, uh, certain music. Now I can't stand this music, so on and so forth, everything, okay? Now, the second is Dukkha in Pali, which is basically what Buddha is saying is that nothing in our life gives you 100% satisfaction. Nothing. Be it a billion dollar, be it, I don't know, you must have so many aims, right? What is your utopian life? What is your utopian apartment? What is your utopian relationship? What is your ideal life? You may end up getting tomorrow, but it's not going to satisfy you 100%. That, knowing that, and getting used to that, really getting, really, really putting that in your system, in your thinking, in your mindset, that will liberate you from all sorts of illusion, all sorts of delusion, all sorts of ridiculous, hope and fear. Is that expensive? I don't think so. 
It's probably the cheapest, right? And it's a very fact. It's a factual. Now the last one, anatta, <coughs> <coughs> which has a lot of different way of approaching, but I'm going to do it kind of a much in a simple way. Basically, anatta fundamentally is everything is your projection or your opinion. Nothing is there, you know, like truly existing. Like, okay, democracy is good. It's our opinion. It's not a truly democracy, it's truly, ultimately, you know, like, it is the almighty truth. No. Democracy is good. It's a projection. It's an opinion. Like that, whatever you value, whatever you see, whatever you decide, whatever you, I don't know, come to a conclusion, it is your projection. It's your opinion. And you need to know that, not just intellectually, but practically, emotionally, you need to know that. Because by knowing that, you will become humble. You will become, oh yeah, this is just my opinion. That's his opinion, her opinion, you know? But we don't do that. So these three, anicca, dukkha, and anatta, is probably the most fundamental Buddhist view. And getting used to that is practice. And living with that kind of principle is Buddhist behavior. So, is that expensive? I don't think so, right? But I do understand why the question is asked like this. Because, as I said, remember, we end up adding culture, tradition, culture. So, here you are saying the practice of Buddhism is becoming expensive day by day. So, one of the reasons why it is becoming expensive is because you need a shrine. And in front of the shrine, there's the offering bowls. Chepa? Chesham? Offering bowls, right? And then you need to do mandala offering, right? All that. Now let's go one by one. Let's go through the offerings. The first one is drinking water. Do you know where that comes from? It's an Indian culture. If Buddhism, if Buddhism was originated from Mongar, it may be Ara. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> you understand? Because that's what the Shashuk was drink. <laughs> if, if the second, the, the second, the second water is Shapsil, which is washing feet water. Do we wash feet? I don't think so. I mean, we, do we? And we don't, I mean, of course, nowadays you take shower and all of that, but you don't, when you invite a guest, do you go around, go and wash their feet? I don't think so. That's a very Indian thing to do. So we have a lot of that. And in the mandala, have you ever performed mandala? Langbo Rinpoche, Tacho Rinpoche, Magbo Rinpoche, Ter Chembe, Pumba, Gekwa, Mathewa, Mandu, Karma. What are you going to do with the elephant? You know, Langbo Rinpoche, the and then that Tacho Rinpoche, those horse, those... If you give me elephant, I will suffer. <laughs> because I don't know where, put, where to put this elephant. I, you know, it's a very expensive maintenance. Elephant, for goodness sake, where do you put this? And it might die in Thimphu during the winter. <laughs> All that. So there are so many cultural stuff that, of course, I'm not here to denounce the culture. Of course, we Bhutanese, sometimes we are so ridiculously obsessed with culture. So I'm, I'm not saying you should not. You, by all means, you, know, you, you can. But what I want you to <laughs> think about is, you know, water is water, glass is glass. What do you want to do? Drink water or drink glass? If you want drink, if you want to drink water, then it doesn't matter. Even this will do. 
right? Just this will do. Drink it like that. 